Well, you're the one that wrote it. You know all about it. Well, you, but what, what's it to you? Well, I'm just going to talk about my character, and that's it. Um, it's well, it's about a man who is 14,000 years old, and this is the sequel. So at this point, we see him as a college professor who's like the raddest college professor in the history of college professing. It's a sequel <laughs> to the cult sci-fi movie, The Man from Earth, which came out in 2007, and it's on IMDb as one of the top 50 sci-fi films of all time. It's a really, it really is a big cult film. Millions of people have seen it. And uh, so this is a sequel, and it's 10 years later, and he, what he does uh, to cover his tracks is he basically hides in plain sight as a college, he changes his name and hides as a college professor. And so when we find him at the beginning of this movie, he is living in Chico, California, working as a college professor, but the world has changed in the last 10 years quite a bit. And his situation has changed, and he finds himself in a very precarious situation when these um, students who are kind of obsessed with him stumble onto his secret. I'm Robert Blanche, and I am a writer, producer, actor of Tomorrow Maybe. I'm Roy Kirk, and I'm a writer, producer for Tomorrow Maybe. Tell me, tell me the storyline. For someone who's never seen this movie, what can we expect? Well, it's about a father, me, who is an ex-con. He gets out of jail. Uh, he's been in, in jail more than out, and uh, he wants to reconnect with his daughter, but she's not really interested because he's been a horrible father, <laughs> and an absentee father. And uh, But when things with her husband start falling apart, she does reach out to him. And the trouble is that her husband is a police officer. So the relationship between the father and the son-in-law don't really go as planned, and the son is dealing with some things not very well, which is why he's starting to uh, take it out on his wife. And um, it escalates from there. Tell me about this. I've not seen this. Tell me, give me the loadout. Um, it's basically a Woody Allen movie that becomes an Eli Roth movie. It's a horror thriller that takes place in the park one night. Someone goes out to get revenge on a financial Ponzi scheme gone bad. Tell, okay, you're one of the writers. How did you come up with that story? And what inspired this? Um, I'm the writer. And what inspired me, basically, first thing I, that came to me was the park. I'd realized I live very close to Central Park and I realized there was never a movie that really took place where the main character was the park and then it kind of came out of that I knew I wanted to make a sort of horror thriller and I didn't want to go the sort of traditional supernatural route and you know the financial world and their crimes is pretty rife with stories and motivation for revenge which is what goes on in my film. Uh, we're uh, promoting The Midnighters which is uh, my feature film directorial debut this is uh, I'm Stuart McLean. I play Vodic in the film. I'm John Wesley, and I'm one of the stars in the film. Now, you're the director of the film. Did you have any involvement in writing the storyline? I did, I did. I, I, I wrote it as well, yeah. Tell me the storyline. How would you sum up the film? You know, it, really quick, the elevator pitch is it's about a 75-year-old uh, ex-con safecracker who gets out of jail after 35 years, finds out he's got a son who's also mixed up with the mob, uh, and he's got to get him out of trouble while he can. Sorry, it's crazy here. <laughs> what inspired that storyline? What a great storyline. Just, I had a friendship with uh, a really great character actor named Leon Russell, who stars in the film, and uh, I just wanted to write something for him. And I asked him, I said, if I could write anything for you, what would you want to play? And he said, I'd like to play a, a, a parent whose kid's in trouble, i got to help him out. I said, can I make it a crime movie? He said, sure. And that was it. My name is Elena Beuka. I am the director, producer, and the lead actress in D Love. And this. I'm D Love. <laughs> he is the D Love. Yeah. Tell me the storyline of D Love. How would you sum it up for me? Okay, so the story, it's, the movie is based on a true story. It happened to my husband and I a couple of years ago. We were coming back from Europe, had one of the worst days that we can have. And then I see this homeless kid at the airport who, who stops me and asks me if I can give him a ride east. I'm like, there is no, I had so much going on, but my husband and him connected right away, and we ended up taking him home for a couple of days, with, and he stayed with us. Hey, tell me about the film that you're involved with. Well, it's a music video, actually. It's, um, it's a Alice in Wonderland in steampunk land, so it's all about uh, a girl, Alice, who is not fitting in in her regular world, and then she kind of gets magically transported to a steampunk land and finds her people there. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> of course, wouldn't you? Well, other people find, yes. So One Less God is a feature film directed by Liam Worthington and it's inspired by the events of the Mumbai attacks, the Mumbai terrorist attacks. Would you like to? 
Yeah, so uh, I guess that's the that's the context of it. But essentially, it's a story about love, life, what connects us as human beings, what divides us. Uh, it explores religion um, and just the nature of belief. And I think it's a it's a story that no matter what you believe, people will relate to it. People will connect with the characters and. Um, at, most importantly, people will be entertained. Um, it's an entertaining, it's a suspenseful film, but on top of everything, you know, it has a very deep meaning, uh, and I think everyone's going to really, really enjoy it. Can you tell me about how you're involved with the film? Uh, 3,257 days ago, I left my son in my car at work, and he died. And um, I was arrested and had a trial. And through the course of that, this lady contacted me and she read a little bit about the story and out of the blue called me and said, we have to do something. I'm so moved by your story. And so this is the real hero, Susan Morgan Cooper. So that's how we met. Tell me about Hear Me Out. What is the story like? Well, it's a music video for my original song called Hear Me Out that um, I wrote and it's about being heard by adults because a lot of the times adult push, adults push away kids' ideas, but we're the next generation and we have ideas on how to make the world a better place too. Devil's Whisper is about a young man, 15-year-old uh, Alejandro Alex Duran, um, played by Luke Ariel, and uh, he comes from a Latino-American family. He aspires to be a Catholic priest, but he ends up uh, getting a hold of this old mysterious box uh, passed down from his grandfather, and he unleashes a demonic force that's bent on possessing him. But really on the surface, Devil's Whisper is about demonic possession, but really underneath what it's really about is childhood trauma, repressed memories, and the uh, cycle of abuse. I am Luke Oriel, the lead in Devil's Whisper, and you're watching Hollywood First Look Features. Nice.